Hello again, guys. This is the final episode of the Toolkit Color Wheels series. Uh, there will be, of course, more videos about the Color Wheels and more practical examples. But I covered a lot in the last episode. So if you haven't watched the last episode or the first one for that matter, go back and do it. They are quite useful. Um, so what's left to cover? Uh, just a little bit about how to operate the wheels. And I actually made an error in the last video, I think. Um, I said at some point that you right click to change direction on something. It's the middle click. Just to make that clear. Uh, uh, or you can hold down Alt. If you hold down Alt and left click is the same as middle click. Useful tip. You're using a pen. And double click resets. So. I'm messing about a bit now, but yeah. You get the idea. Um, if you right click it will update slightly faster because photoshop locks the ui a little bit when you left click so but if you don't have a right click uh, when you're using a pen you can hold down control and click once and now it's gonna follow around without touching anything so uh, until you click again and now it's set. So let's do the same for this one. Uh, just create something here. And... Oh, sorry. I just wanted to create some kind of grade. That's sort of popular, this crossfade towards blue uh, type of thing. Um, just anchor these a bit. Uh, yeah, let's let's pretend I like this uh, type of effect. Uh, I think it's maybe too strong anyway. But anyway, so if I want to save this now as a preset, because I like this, um, you can of course save presets with your custom points as well, which is very useful. What you would do is you need to have the toolkit panel maker. And you go up here, and there's options here. If you watch the Toolkit Panamaker series, you know that loading the layout will load whatever you changes you did to it in the panel maker. Uh, you can also resize the wheels to a different size. And the wheels um, so like small. And if you then make it wider, they change direction useful if you want to dock it at the bottom. In this current version though, uh, this stupid slider is fixed. So if I do this, I still have the slider over here. That will be changed in the next version. So something that I don't like, but or if you have a really high resolution, you might want to have big, big wheels. Okay, but let's say we like this and we want the preset. What we do is we click on create preset. And in here, uh, we need to select all. Um, Control A on a PC, Command A on a Mac, or right click and select all. And then copy, which is Control C or Command C on a Mac, or right click and copy. And then I can close this. I go to panel maker. Let's use the first button here. Uh, you need to have advanced mode on. You'll be able to access 
panel command here. Uh, and it's actually set to an example already. So what we want to do is remove this. Let's just clear it out. If you're creating your own button, just drag it in, change to panel command as the command type, type in preset as the text command, and in options, you paste the settings that we just copied. So control V on a PC, command V on a Mac, or right click paste. Okay. Now, um, I might have clicked on my tablet. So let's do it again. Yeah. Uh, I somehow, when I messed with the settings earlier, I activated touch on the Wacom tablet and I forgot to change it back. I usually turn off all the buttons and all the touch stuff because I just use the keyboard. Uh, anyway, save. And then I need to load the layout. And let's do medium wheels because that's the layout size we have right now. And now if I go and click on, let's delete this first. Now you see we don't have anything here. If I click on example one, it creates the exact values that we had every time. Uh, quite useful, especially when you get into custom points, like I showed in the past video. The past video was quite heavy, and I'm sorry about that, but I think I covered a lot of good things, so I'm going to keep it as it is. Uh, you can go watch it again and again, several times over. <laughs> um, that's it for this episode. Uh, there will, of course, always be new episodes. And for all of the tools, I just don't want to cover functionality like I've been doing now. I also want to cover real life examples. So once I did all the basic stuff, then I will start to come up with examples. And if you guys have any examples or anything you want me to show, then feel free to leave a comment on either YouTube or in Facebook group. Uh, Facebook group name is Retouching Toolkit Community. And the YouTube you already have since you're watching this on YouTube. Um, if you subscribe on YouTube, you can also click on the bell icon next to it and set alerts. And if you have alerts, you're going to get an alert when we upload new stuff. It also helps our channel grow a little bit and get more exposure, which is very good, not only for the uh, future of the tools, but I plan to do some free educational videos that's unrelated to the tools. So that's it. Thank you for watching this series. Be sure to check out the other series that we have and I'll catch you soon. Bye.